Want to know how to swim extra fast? Or what the absolute best way to farm belly is? Here are 135 super secret Blox Fruits things you probably didn't know. Blox Fruits had to change the look of the original bosses because they almost got the game deleted. If you're wondering why bosses don't look like the ones in the One Piece anime, well, they used to look almost the same. Due to copyright, developers were obligated to change their looks. Gameplay would have been much better if we still had the real One Piece characters, but better be safe than sorry. Back in 2019, new players couldn't even get the boat because experienced players used to kill them as soon as they spawned. Fortunately, Blocks Fruits developers realized that this was a huge problem since they couldn't attract any new players to the game. Nowadays, you must reach level 20 to fight with other players, so not only did they fixed the problem of spawn killing, but also gave new players a chance to do some quests and see if they liked the game. We all know that the One Piece fruits are sphere shaped, so then why are the fruits in the game shaped like a square? The reason for this is actually the same as the bosses. If you played Blocks Fruits back when it was released, you know that the fruits used to be sphere shaped. One Piece once again thought they were too similar and almost got the game deleted for a second time. Developers had to change the shape of the fruits in order to keep the game alive. It was definitely worth it. If you've ever gotten falsely banned, you know how annoying it is. The old banning system worked too well. It banned players that used any type of cheat or did anything that's punishable with a ban, but it also used to falsely ban players that did nothing wrong. Blocks Fruits realized this when thousands of players started flooding the game's Discord server with complaints. Because of this, developers built a new system that permabans only players who committed serious violations. And players that committed less serious violations now get significant significantly less severe punishments. I guarantee you nobody knows about this one. If you use a move before you touch lava, it will make you immune and you won't die. It works with literally any move, and from now on it will save thousands of lives. This is one of the quickest ways to level up. All you need is a Buddha fruit. When you transform, your hit range dramatically increases, so not only can you kill NPCs quickly, but they also won't even be able to touch you. And when you combine it with a god human, you will level up even quicker. When you're done with one island during the raid, it's time to go to another one. But did you know a boat isn't actually the quickest option? That's why pro players dash to the next island. It saves you so much time. Some people still don't know that using an auto clicker in blocks fruits is allowed. It makes life a hundred times easier, especially when it comes to farming. All you have to do is turn on the auto clicker and stand on the spawn point of the user or NPC. Feel free to keep it running overnight and you will have a nice surprise when you wake up in the morning. Did you know if you head over to the bottom right corner of Marine base, climb on the tower and jump down, you will find Parlas, an NPC that sells you the black cape. He will sell it to you quickly by saying he bought it for 100,000 robux from some kid, and now he's selling it for only 50k and needs the money right now, because he has to go to church. This one is really cool. Get ready by going near the water and equipping phoenix fruit. Spawn yourself a boat, activate phoenix's X ability, which is healing, sit in the boat and just exit it. Now you've got yourself a cool animation that will last forever. It will literally haunt you for the rest of your life. If you head over to the cafe on the second sea and go into the corner where those pictures are, look up and you'll see a pillar you need to jump onto. Once you're up there, take a careful look at the wall and you will see some text. It says it exists, but no one actually knows what this is supposed to mean or if it's just an easter egg without any actual meaning. What do you think? Next time you're using Dozy, instead of just clicking it, hold it. It will travel much farther and deal so much more damage. As soon as you launch the game for the first time, instead of killing NPCs on the spawn island, go over to Fountain City and stand behind this wall to attract them. You can hit them, but they can't do anything to you. You will reach level 60 just by killing three NPCs. If you're really curious and want to find out what the Blocks Fruits map is made on, I recommend you go to the mansion on the second sea, put your graphics at the lowest level possible, and jump up in the sky as high as you can. You can do this even if you're a beginner since all you need is Kilo's F ability. You will freeze midair and look around you. It's a globe. Hopefully One Piece doesn't sue Blocks Fruits for copyright since the map is still sphere shaped and not a cube like all the fruits. The only reason why some players don't like using light fruit is because once you activate the flight light, you can't steer while flying. It only travels straight. And if someone is not using the light fruit for flying, that's probably because they don't know. All they have to do is awaken the fruit and there you go. Now you can navigate where you want to fly. Most of you already know who Xyolus is. An NPC you see that's basically Blocks Fruits Casino. He sells you random fruits and pros avoid him because they know he's actually a scammer. The chances of him giving you something good are super low. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to get out of there as quickly as you can, and you're on low HP, just use Vex.
Venom. The lower your health is, the faster Venom will be. I also love how Venom's Noxious shot skill auto aims to the nearest enemy. Only 1% knew this one. Many of you already know about the secret room located right below the cafe, but not everyone knows its name. When you enter the room, you'll see a whiteboard. Look behind it and you'll see that it says King Toad's House. A long time ago, you could find pretty valuable loot in it. We're talking diamonds and gold. Take a look at that briefcase on the floor. It used to be full of cash. I know I'm not the only one who tried to escape the raid at least once. Why? Because you can still collect some bounty without risking your life. First locate the nearest island, and then shine that flight to get there. It may take you a while, but it's worth it. Actually, it's not. But it feels good to know that you can do that. Even the swan ship looks more appealing than this boat. Everything about it is weird, but I'll still show you the way to acquire it. You'll have to be at the cafe, run out, and climb on top of the factory. Now, listen carefully. At one of those windows, there will be an NPC that can sell you this boat. I won't tell you his exact location, though. Go find it yourself. The goofy boat costs 1,500 fragments, and it's super slow. So why would developers make that bad boat? Well, it's actually actually not so bad, and even though it looks like a 3 year old kid's sketch, it has 5,000 horsepower making it one of the most durable boats in the game. Also, it's not called a goofy boat. Its real name is the Flower Boat. Bloxford's developers simply love hats. If you go behind a windmill on Turtle Island, you will find a red hat called Vietnam Cone. It's just an easter egg made by the developers to show their support towards Vietnamese Bloxford's players. I bet you didn't know that. While you're at Turtle Island, head into the mansion and you'll notice a carpet. Walk on the tiles and then walk on the carpet. They make two completely different sounds. It's amazing that developers paid that much attention to detail. Spin is one of the most hated fruits in the game. It's so bad. But maybe you don't know everything about it. Believe it or not, Spin's spinning bomber ability has aimbot. You only have to be near your enemy and click C and it should work. Try it out and see for yourself. This is the only raid method that has a 100% success rate. Get into the light raid. And when you're inside the pyramid, all you have to do is transform into Buddha. Now you can just stand behind the wall and hit the boss without receiving any damage. Buddha's range is just so OP. You know how it's super hard to see anything while doing a quest in a dark space? Well, just turn on fast mode. Fast mode isn't only for players that are playing on lower end PCs, but also for those who have a high end PC. The fast mode makes the dark places look so much brighter. Many new players spend all their money rolling fruits, which is basically gambling. And it almost always makes you lose. Instead, you should focus on saving money and get yourself a boot as soon as possible. Once you have it, the game becomes so much easier and you can earn way more money. Did you know that you can actually remove fruits? I don't know why anyone would want to do this, but it's possible. If you want to remove a fruit, you can go to Prison Island where you can find a guy that will remove your unwanted fruit for $50,000. That's right, you have to pay him and give him your fruit. Your best friendo took his name too seriously. He was even able to level up your sword or your gun. Only three friends are randomly selected for this role per server, and since the 25th of February, Best of Friendos no longer deals damage to the allies. This gives players an advantage because they don't have to think about hurting their allies. One of the first things that was changed in 2023 was the speed of walking using control. From now on, it's actually the same for everyone. Bloxfruit's developers say that this is only due to aesthetic purposes, and running speed still remains unchanged to this day. Did you know you can use abilities while eating fruit? Well, you could've. The fruit animation looked pretty cool when combined with an ability, but we assume Bloxfruit's developers removed this because it was considered a bug. Who knows? Before releasing the 1v1 PvP system, there were no no rules when it came to fighting. The 1v1 PvP system allows you to kill or die to the same player up to 3 times every 3 days. For example, if you kill the same player twice and he kills you once, you won't earn any bounty from each other until 3 days have passed because the score will be 3 out of 3. Luckily, you can switch your enemies every day since there are over 600,000 active users every single day. If you have one special OP you hate, then you'll hate this update more than you hate him. Observation Hacky is definitely the best and most useful thing in the game, but for starters, it's impossible to level up to. Here's a trick to max your observation as quickly as possible. Go to any NPC that grinds your OB Hockey, preferably near your spawn point, and just let them hit you while your OB is activated. And once all your dodges are gone, just hop on another server server and repeat the process. This will save you so much time. Most of you think that light is the fastest fruit in the game, but it's actually not. A portal fruit is obviously much faster. Portal's world warp ability lets you travel anywhere on the map, and I mean anywhere. 
teleporting is the fastest way of traveling and you can also bring your friend. But I think it's too expensive since traveling is the only thing you can use it for. That's not worth 1.9 million. Heads up, the only way to get a triple dark blade is to be really good friends with an admin or be his brother. Only admins can get this sword, which is obviously because it's too overpowered. It looks like you're holding three dark blades and its abilities are the same but tripled. For example, the slash ability is the same but instead of one, it sends out three slashes. I hope I'll never encounter an enemy that has this sword. We all know that when you want to awaken a specific fruit, you have to complete a raid using that same fruit. But there's a little trick that makes you able to awaken any fruit by completing a raid using Buddha. Just start a raid and complete the first four islands with the Buddha fruit, then eat the fruit that you want to awaken and use that fruit to kill the last standing NPC. When you're teleported to the awakening place, just awaken that fruit. So easy. Since I don't have any friends I can ride with on Flamingo, I'll spawn my best -o friendo. You can do the same or just use your real friend if you're that lucky. Then spawn a flamingo with a love fruit while you're near them in order to pick them up and then there you go. You're swimming through the air with your friend. This also works on NPCs. I do this every time I'm bored in this game. Eat the portal fruit and then activate the parallel escape move while standing still. After the move ends you can enjoy being completely invisible to all the other players. Now you can attack your friends and they won't know what's going on. It'll be hilarious, trust me. This will be the easiest loot of your life if you have shining flight. Just climb on top of the haunted castle and there you will find three chests. Easy 30k. I feel sorry for you if you don't have shining flight yet. It truly is one of the most useful moves. Most of you already know about the best of friendo, but what if you don't have any friends? You can still use it. Just activate the movement in a blink of an eye, you will get a friend that will protect you at all costs. He's a better friend than any of my real friends. Oh yeah, I don't have any of those. Did you know that dragon fruit is literally useless? Well, not really, but it is if you're still in the first sea. If you're a beginner and somehow get your hands on the dragon fruit, don't eat it. You will get nothing and just waste 3.5 million belly. Oh yeah, you also can't store it. It's better to just donate it at that point. If it's your first time launching the game, listen to the map. That map you see at the starter island is fully accurate. Instead of going around in your boat trying to find an island, just travel in the direction of the island that's literally located on the map. Why do people ignore this? In order to achieve the fastest possible moving speed on the ground, you have to equip Leopard Fruit and Pilot Helmet. Those two when combined will make it impossible for your enemies to catch you. Some of you still don't know that you can unawaken your fruit once it's awakened. Go into the cafe's basement and find an awakening expert. There you can simply unawaken your fruit and I don't really know why anyone would want to do this, but it feels good to know that you can. Some of you already know that magma has the same ability as ice. You can walk on water using both of them. Ice's walking on water ability was inspired by One Piece, but magma's wasn't. We still don't know why developers did that. This one is really funny. Equip your katana, open your inventory, and let go of Zed and quickly press unequip. You will be stuck in a really weird pose. This glitch is better known as the sus glitch. Some even say it's bannable, but don't listen to them. There are so many more risky things and glitches that aren't even bannable. If you ever wanted to turn your boat into an airplane, I'll show you how to do it. Use Love's F ability to pick up your friend, and then fly into the boat's driver's seat. And boom, now you've got a flying boat that you can't really control. When you perform your last resort, you get a damage boost for six and a half seconds and the buff increases the closer you are to death, so it truly is a last resort. Back in 2020, performing last resort used to take your own health. Because of this, players used to avoid it, so Bloxfruits had to do something in order to make it more appealing to the players, so they removed it dealing damage. Have you ever used it? In the last week of 2019, Bloxfruits decided it was time to add some new tracks to the game. I assume that's how the very known C theme was born. This is always my answer whenever someone asks me what I'm listening to. Before the 8th update, the game was set to take away players' bounty and PvP even if it was his first time starting the game. This made things super difficult for new players. Since then, players only lose bounty and PvP if they've got more than 2.5 million. And the maximum amount of bounty a player can have is 30 million. Making bounty impossible to lose in PvP for players that have less than 2.5 million is a great feature, but is it really worth it if we still lose huge amounts from every lost fight? Bloxfruits took care of that too. Bounty loss from PvP is now based on the enemy's level and bounty, which means you won't lose so much anymore. You can get 200 fragments for free by going to Hydra Island that's located on the third sea. Once you're there, head over to the arena trainer, start the quest and kill your enemy. And there you go, you've just earned yourself 200 fragments. Don't get scared once you see that the trainer's got the dark blade. Luckily, he can't use any abilities. Also, you can start this quest every hour. 
Did you know that boats can fly? It's so simple to do this, but just a tiny number of players know about this. All you have to do is take a control fruit, create a dome with its first ability, and launch your boat into the sky. That's almost as fast as the portal. Do you know about this secret AFK farming method? Get ready for this one by equipping an elemental fruit, and then get yourself a katana. Go to any NPC that doesn't have hockey and turn on your auto clicker. The NPC won't be able to hit you, and you can leave the auto clicker on overnight. In the morning, you'll have quite some loot. But make sure to use the worst sword because in this case, the amount of hits is the thing that matters most. This one's not a trick, but more of a prank you can abuse to make fun of your friends. Buy Fast Boats Game Pass and hype up your friend to get a ride in your super fast boat. Once they get in and ride off, just spawn the boat again and the boat your friend was in will despawn and drown them. I could try this if I had any friends. Not everyone knows about the electro fighting style you can learn from the mad scientist. He's located somewhere in the Skylands, but if you think I'm gonna be so nice and tell you where he is, haha, <laughs> go find him yourself. In Bloxfruits, there are two islands it's impossible to stay alive on. One of them is hidden and its only purpose is to kill you. Anywhere you stand on it will quickly take away your whole HP. No matter who you are, you can't survive this. The second island is a little bit more human, however you still won't survive it. I'll show you how to find it. Go to the graveyard and then look at the boat from its right side. Get closer to the boat's bow and just try travel forward. It will take some time, but meeting Rip Indra will be worth it. Or not. However, chances of you killing him are equal to zero because his health constantly restores and you have to be super quick and super strong. Even if you somehow do kill him, unfortunately you won't get a big bounty. There's an NPC called Aaron that will let you watch the whole Rip Indra's fight. You can find her at the Castle of the Sea. What's even more interesting is that after you reset the fight, you'll be stuck in Aaron's POV. That's one way to become an NPC. This could save you if you're just stuck on the open sea without a boat. Activate Shark V4 and then combine it with Shining Flight. You can fly in the water. This is completely useless because who would use Shining Flight to swim? But when you think about it, this would be a great way to prank your friends in a boat race. It's impossible to swim with the Devil Fruit. Or is it? If you activate Fish V3 Race, you will be able to swim while your devil fruit is equipped without taking any damage. One more thing most of you didn't know about Fish V3 is that when you activate it, you will take up to 80% less damage from any source. Fish V3 is actually extremely overpowered. Beginners definitely don't know about this one. A saber sword is the only sword in the game that you can awaken just as fruits. When you get it, kill someone that's a similar level to you, and you can upgrade the abilities on it. Trident weapons are the only weapons with two kind of dash. The first one is the normal one where you can fly using a trident, and the second one where you can only throw it. The first dash performs great for boosting your movement during the fight. They're similar to Minecraft, don't you think? This one is a little more complicated, but I guarantee you it's worth it. You'll need Buddha's instinct and any weapon you like. During the battle, activate instinct and dodge the enemy's attack. And as soon as you see instinct's animation equip your weapon, then activate shift lock and start jumping around. Your jumping speed will be way faster. Faster. For one of the best speed glitches in the entire game, you'll need Rabbit's V3 ability and Barrier's F move. First activate Rabbit's V3 and then hold Stairs ability. Now you have a speed boost from Rabbit V3 until you run out of stamina. But don't forget that you have to hold Stairs move because if you let go, it's over. You'll literally die. Well, actually you don't, but you'll be slow again. There are many ways you can make a boat fly, but this one can turn your boat into a rocket. Use control area move and sit on the boat as you levitate it. Then aim directly into the sky and your boat will start spinning like crazy and launch you into the stratosphere. Do you know about this crazy helicopter glitch? You won't spawn a helicopter, but you will become one that doesn't fly. Take your doe fruit and go to the fruit remover. As you use doe C move, remove your doe fruit and you'll start spinning like crazy. Spirit fruit is known for being an effective fruit for PvP and is the third most expensive fruit in the entire game. Spirits are collected over time and used when you summon a buddy. In the update before V4, instead of obtaining them from NPCs or players, you simply get them instantly. Pretty cool. For many of us, Kilo was the first fruit we acquired. Back in the days, Greater Heights used to increase Kilo's ability damage, but not anymore. No matter how high you drop, it will always deal the same damage. 
Still, this is one of the only fruits that can counter enemies in the air, and it only costs $5,000. Flame Z move used to be the same as in One Piece. It went through three reworks due to unknown reasons, and now it's just a blue fire called Blue Fire Bullets. That's not even similar to One Piece. Why on earth do you think they changed it so much? Portal's physical fruit model is a reference to Aperture Science weighted storage cube from the game Portal. But did you know Portal used to be called Door Fruit? It was released in Update 15 and soon completely redesigned with a new name, appearance, and skill set. Why you ask? Once again, Bloxfruits had to change the fruit because of copyright and save the game for who knows which time. When most players launch the game for the first time, they start killing NPCs one by one which is really slow. Instead, hit each of them once and lure them on yourself. Once they're all at the same spot, use splash abilities to kill them quicker. This way you will deal damage to all of them by using the ability once. Do you know about the giant Buddha sword? You heard that right, simply transform into the Buddha and hold your sword. You shouldn't have equipped your sword while transforming to Buddha. Once you transform, you have to quickly equip your sword and undo the Buddha at the exact same moment. Now you're a little guy carrying a huge sword. It doesn't do much, but it looks really cool. The giant sword looks cool, but it's not as useful as this one. If you're still in the first sea, head over to the upper sky, but make sure you're at least level 425. Now kill both bosses and just hop on another server and repeat. You'll thank me later. For each beast you kill, you get anywhere from 50 to $250,000. Now that loot triples when a sea beast storm happens. There are three beasts you have to kill and get a maximum of $750,000. Now there's one more trick. If you bought double money, you can get up to 1.5 million just by killing three sea beasts. I mean, it's not just three, but you get me. Did you know that magma is not actually the strongest fruit? Well, it's not. Magma takes 6,500 damage and bomb takes over 9,000 making it the strongest fruit in the game. Why is magma still so hype? I bet you didn't know this one. We all know control fruits let you levitate objects. Now if you go to hot and cold and activate the first ability, you will be able to move igloos. There's one chest under every single igloo. Enjoy it. All of us have died from the beautiful pirate before many times. And what we hate even more is having to travel back to the beautiful pirate all the way from Hydra. It's a long way if you don't have a portal, but there's actually a secret tunnel that leads you directly to the beautiful pirate. At the bottom of the waterfall, behind the water, there's a tunnel that will lead you there. But be careful since there are two tunnels. You need to get into the bottom one, and I won't tell you where the other one takes you. You'll have to find that out yourself. There's a hole at the great tree that lets you fall under the map. Under there, you will discover a huge playground and a great hiding spot if you're trying to run away from someone. One of the best ways to prank your friends in Bloxfruits is to activate Magma's Beast Ride ability while near water. Bloxfruits developers use the same sound effect for this ability as for the spawning of a sea beast. Now your friend will think a sea beast just spawned and they'll run as fast as they can to kill it. You probably don't know this one. If you're a beginner and want to know how everyone has those abilities with cool animations, head over to Arrow. He's an NPC that allows players to avoid their race to v3. That's how you get those cool cosmetic changes and a varying race skill. You can find him in a hidden room under Diamond's Hill. Just don't tell him I told you that. If you just got your control fruit, you probably don't know about this one. If you want to spawn that huge control area, all you've got to do is hold Z instead of just clicking it. This ability also lets you make your boat fly as well. Just a reminder of how great control is. Another thing control fruit allows you to do is become immune to the enemy's hit while you use it C ability. You've got a couple of seconds until the ability ends, and in some situations, it could save your life. You definitely didn't know that one. Have you ever wanted a flaming boat? Get yourself an unawakened phoenix fruit and activate its C move. Then sit in your boat and you will have blue flames around you that you won't be able to get rid of no matter what. It only looks cool though. Have you ever found a fragment chest? What? You didn't know those exist? Don't worry, most people don't, and that's because these can only be found on Mirage Island. But only during sea events. Even the most OG players don't know their spawn locations. Everyone knows that you can have a maximum of four friends in a raid, but there's a trick to double this number. All you will need is four people with love fruit that will spawn flamingo, and then the other four people will get on those flamingos, then just start a raid while standing on a pad. Raids literally can't get any easier than this. Everyone looks at the bomb fruit like it's something useless. I mean, it is one of the worst fruits in the game, but most of you don't know that it can become a launch 
launch pad. That's right, get your friend and hold the V ability. The longer they can hold it, the better. And then let go. You will launch your friend so high, he will reach the upper sky. This can be pretty useful. For example, when you're on low HP and need to get out of the fight, but your opponent is a pro and will find you again in a second. Just have your friend launch you to safety. I'd be able to do this if I had any friends. Flash step was an ability early players discovered that can be used for the no clip glitch. You just have to stand by the wall, move your camera, and press R to flash. That's it, it was that easy and always worked. No clip was the first glitch discovered and there are a lot more of them out there. Let me know if you want me to make a video about all the glitches found in Blocks Fruits. Darkbeard used to drop something called a rare artifact. It was used for stat refund and to change your race from Torps. Demand for these was huge since they had many uses, especially for at the time, the rare dragon breath fighting style. Artifacts have since been removed however since update 11 and were replaced with fragments. Fragments are kinda easy to obtain, defeating Darkbeard or Rip Indra will give you 1500 fragments. When the game first got out, it was called Blocks Piece, and a few months later it became Blocks Fruits. As for the previous things that were removed due to copyright, the situation was the exact same. One Piece thought Blocks Piece sounded way too similar even though there's a Roblox game called a One Piece. That definitely doesn't sound similar, not even close. Players started bullying the new name, but all of a sudden the popularity for the game skyrocketed just because of it, and this tiny change definitely brought Blocks Fruits thousands of new players. Years ago, there was this thing called a treasure inventory. It was used to store fruits and game passes. You could only store one of each fruit and you could upgrade your treasure inventory with a game pass which allowed you to store two of each fruit. It was a physical chest, unlike today's inventory, which means every time you wanted to use it you would have to walk over to it and open it. There are secrets about rubber fruit most of you don't even know, and yet they can make the fruit so overpowered. In real life, rubber is a really bad electricity conductor, and so is it in Blocks Fruit. So with anyone with any fighting style that uses electricity, they'll have trouble killing Killing you. On top of that, rubber fruit makes you immune to the gun impacts. Definitely implement this into your strategy. A secret fruit not many players know about is called the meme fruit, and it literally looks like a traffic cone. The reason why you don't have it is because it's only for admins and moderators. It deals huge damage, but only to your friends. That's why it's called meme fruit. However, us ordinary mortals will never have it. Only admins and mods can abuse this one. This one is really useful for players who want to play in peace and keep all of the loot just for themselves. While launching the game, simply click on the servers and choose ascending. Here you will see a bunch of servers with zero players, and just get into one. Now you have a whole map just for yourself. You can have a party with your friends or grind together. An ice fruit will allow you to walk on water without receiving any damage, and so will magma. But there's a way players without any fruits can walk on water and get zero damage. Simply hold your space once you're in the water and your HP will remain full. Smaller avatars actually perform better in PvP. How easy! Smaller avatars are much harder to hit because, well, they have smaller hitboxes. If you don't believe me, try it out for yourself. From now on, I'm only wearing smaller avatars when I'm about to PvP someone. The first time I started the game, I somehow got in this house without even knowing a thing about the game. There's one house on the middle island you can enter and find a very interesting surprise in it. There's nothing worthy inside, but since it's an easter egg house, the content of it is pretty wild. Check it out. For those of you that attempted fighting Don Swan, you never fought him in the mansion. Instead, you're teleported to another location on the map that's not even close to the mansion. I mean, what did you expect? It's obvious that in-game fruits were inspired by the One Piece anime, but only a few of you know that the fruit characteristics were fully copied from One Piece. For example, Ice Fruit lets you walk on water, just like Aokiji in one piece. If you equip the human race v3, you will get permanent dodges on any fruit that you have. Your enemy won't be able to hit you eight times, and if you have a pale scarf, you will get two extra dodges. That's so cool. Did you know you should never do your raids in the third sea? The enemies there are literally too overpowered. Always go to the second sea first, where enemies are much easier to kill since they're lower level. Just don't forget to switch your fruits. Hockey is simply amazing. As you level up your Hockey, the damage you deliver levels up too. So get your full hockey and level it up as soon as you can. Did you know this? Comment down below. You probably already know about the laboratory used for starting raids on the second sea, but I doubt you know about the second location on the same island where you can also start raids. Head over to the hot side of Hot and Cold Island and climb on top of the mountain. Here you will find a secret door. Inside, there's a bunch of capsules for starting a raid. Good to know. Leopard's X move better 
known as Spiraling Kick, regenerates all of your air jumps. Now just jump over your enemies during the raid since those with knockback tend to hit at a certain angle just to throw you in the water. I don't know a single person who doesn't like finding chests, but many people still don't know about this hidden location. Head over to the second C, Kingdom of Rose Area 1 to be more precise, and then go to the bottom of the bridge. There you will notice a wall that's slightly different from the others. Just flash step inside where you will find three gold chests. This can also be a great hiding location. Developers thought it would be obvious, but a lot of players still don't know that Donut Roller is an amazing weapon. It's not only used for transportation, if you run over a player or an NPC, it will do quite some damage and even drag them if you angle it correctly. It's shocking how many players don't know that you don't have to go to a fruit dealer each time you want to equip a fruit you bought. Simply open up your shop, click on the permanent fruits, and equip any fruit you want. Of course, you can only equip the ones you bought, but this is still super useful to know. Paramecia, Logia, and Zone are the names whose meaning most of you don't know. Let me translate them. Natural, Elemental, and Beast. Those names I first mentioned are how categories used to be called back in the day. Just like sphere-shaped fruits and old skins of NPCs, the old names of fruit categories were removed because of copyright. This is because they were the same ones as in One Piece. Way back in time, whenever fruit spawned, you had to search for it and it was an exhausting process. That's because there were only four game passes, and Fruit Notifier wasn't one of them. However, that changed nothing for players who don't spend their money on Robux. Now that's cool. At the moment, there's four sea events in Bloxfruit. Ship raids, CPSs, Rumbling Waters, and Mirage Island. But in the older version of Bloxfruits, there was not a single sea event. Grinding Fragments was so hard and many people left the game because of this and came back when sea events were introduced. If you knew that one, let me know down in the comments below. But way back in the prehistoric ages, millions of years ago, the maximum number of players that could play on a single server was only 10. I'm gonna guess there wasn't any PvPs. Imagine how cool it would be though if there was 10 players teamed up and getting richer together. Or you could do all your quests in peace without thinking about if someone's going to attack you or have the same quest as you. I wish people would stop attacking me. I already told you about sea beast hunting, but how do you kill them quickly? The best fruits to use for this are definitely Shark Race and Magma V2. Magma V2's abilities are too overpowered for sea beast hunting, and the Shark Race lets you swim way faster. Magma will make sure those beasts get killed, and Shark Race will let you kill them even quicker. Everybody knows that the Electric Claw is one of the most superior fighting styles in the whole game, mostly because you can use it for grinding as well as for PvP. But for this you need to upgrade it by going to Turtle Island in the third sea and starting a quest from the previous hero NPC. You'll have to get to the mansion in under 30 seconds, which is pretty hard, but simply use a portal or lightning and get over there in just seconds. However, this one's not for players that are total beginners. Most of you know about the cursed ship, but not many of you know about the trick that will help you get rich just by looting chests found in the cursed ship. Well, actually, you can only loot the cursed ship once. Actually, that's false. When you're done looting it, just hop on another server and voila! Now you can loot it again. When you head over to the temple located on Upper Sky Island, you'll see a tunnel at the bottom of the temple. Use any ability you want to break that stone keeping you from entering the temple, and when you get inside, you'll find eight chests. The best thing about this is you can just hop from server to server and keep farming the money. ka -ching. Using this glitch will make sure you win every PvP battle out there. Take God Human Fruit and use the Soaring Beast, the Z move. Then face up and quickly face down and spam space Bar. Your new nickname will be Speed. Did you know that dying to an NPC makes you lose bounty? Um, yeah, we already know this. Well, you may know the first part, but you don't know how much bounty you lose after dying from which NPC. The amount of bounty you lose is actually an NPC's level. For example, if an NPC is level 10, you will lose 1,000. Simple math. On the Castle of the Sea, there are bookshelves that are unbreakable, but there's a way of breaking them, and it's pretty easy. All you need to do is go outside and break a tree, and then quickly run to the bookshelves and break them. This secret gets a reward for being the most useless secret ever. I really want to meet the person that found this out. Can you imagine how bored they were? Did you know that you could actually get a free leopard? I didn't believe this at first, but when I hit that red subscribe button down below and launched Blocks Fruits, I had a leopard fruit in my inventory. How crazy is that? I can't even imagine how much effort the game's developers had to put in in order to make that work. If you still don't have requirements to fight Ice Admiral, but for some reason you want to hang 
hang out with him, you can go into the cave on the snow island and use a flash step to get through the doors. You won't be able to fight him though, but he can still do damage to you. I guess he doesn't like to hang out. Did you know that the barrier in Underwater City is actually breakable? When you get there, go over to the place NPCs spawn, you know what I mean, on the side where the barrier is. It's pretty simple to get through it. You just have to run at it on an angle where the corner is and there you go. It's not so useful though. Did you know if you go to Sky Island, you will find a house that looks like a church? But that's not it. There's a chance of a diamond chest spawning there. And if you look up, you'll see a code that gives you one belly. Enjoy. There is a specific blue house you can walk in located on the Sky Island. It's super easy to notice. There's nothing lootable inside, but you will find a misc that will spawn a letter on the floor. You won't be able to read this letter though, since it's only for those who are completing the quest for getting a Dark Blade V2. It's good to know for the future. Future, combining a magma fruit with the word infinite must sound too good to be true, but it almost is. And the only requirement is to have magma fruit. Just activate magma floor while in a fight and run around your enemy, or let them get close to you if they can. It's not something that's hidden, but it's a pretty good way to prank your friends. I don't think there's an easier tactic to master any weapon. Head over to the last island in the game, and get one of the NPCs to one shot however you want. Then just pull out the weapon you want to master and finish off the NPC using it. Now you just have to repeat it a few more times and you'll have successfully mastered a weapon. That's insane. I know everyone is starting to hate the basic fruit dealer. He never has anything good in stock. The advanced fruit dealer has way better fruits and the minimum number of fruits he can have in stock is seven, which is much more compared to the three that a basic fruit dealer can have. And one more thing we all hate about the basic fruit dealer is the restock time, which is four hours. That's one more point for the advanced fruit dealer because his restock time is half, only two hours. If you have access to Mirage Island, he's definitely the better option. Did you know that you can equip two fighting styles at the same time? You simply need to have either Dark Step or Death Step with the V ability unlocked. When you activate the V ability, your legs will burn and you will deal 22% more damage. Then just go to the teacher and equip any other fighting style and boom! Now you have two fighting styles equipped at the same time. One of the most useless fighting tricks is placing mines into the water. I bet you didn't know that one. All you need to do is equip Bomb Fruit, walk over to the closest edge on the land, and use C ability. Now half of your mines will be planted in water. I don't really have an idea of how this could kill someone, but use it however you want. You can't do this one without a friend, so pay somebody to pretend to be your friend. You'll need to have a Portal Fruit, and your friend will need a Control Fruit. They have to activate Echo Knife, and right before the last hit comes through, they must use World Warp to a random location, and the player who got hit by Echo Knife will go flying! When the screen effect stops adding more slashes, you'll know it's the last hit, and then warp to a random location. If you master this one, it will become the ultimate prank. Not many people know that Falcon's transformation lets you jump slightly higher, which lets you reach the walls that are usually too high to jump over. Still, it's a pretty useless fruit that's not worth anywhere near $300,000. Even though some of you know about server hopping, most people never use it. And believe Believe me, there are hundreds of useful things you can do while server hopping. For example, looting chests, completing your quest faster, and even killing a boss. I know everybody hates waiting for the boss you need to kill to respawn. Some of them can even make you wait up to 45 minutes in place just to kill them, or to get killed. But just hop on another server and they will probably be there waiting for you. And in the desert island in the first sea, there's a chest sitting by the pyramid. Once you loot it, you'll open a secret tunnel that leads to an NPC called Hassan. You can buy a swordsman hat from him that gives you 10% more sword damage, no matter which sword you've got equipped. The quickest way to boost your bounty would be to go to John Luke Island, a tiny hidden island located in the first sea. Then find an NPC called Mob Leader and kill him. Each time you kill him, your bounty raises for about 3,000. In only one hour, you can pump your bounty up to 180,000 because he respawns every minute. Fighting someone with Observation Hacky is the most annoying thing. There are many fighting styles that can fight against Observators. But in case you don't have any, simply get a gun and upgrade it to get an observation block. Now use it at the beginning of the fight and then spam all of your abilities without your enemy blocking them. If you still don't believe that Blocks Fruits is based on the One Piece anime, here's another proof. After eating a chopped fruit, you will become immune to sword attack, even the strongest and sharpest one, which is a perfect way to prank new players. In older versions of the game, water used to look so weird. It's like developers didn't even try to work on a single detail. It was just the same shade of blue with a weird wave animation. Even though it had an animation, it's still
still looked like it's standing still. The new water texture suits the game so much better. If you played Blocks Fruits when Sky Jump was infinite, it was probably your favorite ability because of how overpowered it was. As long as you had energy, you could spam Sky Jump and reach the skies. No wonder why developers realized so quickly they should nerf it, which they sadly did. I bet you didn't know that. The current level cap for Blocks Fruits is 2450, but years ago it was only 300. Max Island in the game was the Colosseum, which is just so funny now. It was the end of the game once you reached it, and the second C didn't even exist. Do I really have to say anything about the third C? Luckily, developers expanded the whole game. It would be really sad if that's where the game ended. There you have it 135 Blocks Fruits things you probably didn't know. Make sure to subscribe and watch this video on the screen, or don't. I can't tell you what to do.